The following program will make you want to grow things and experience new and wonderful dreams about your plants, garden, and garden design. Listener participation is always strongly advised. Good evening and welcome to you Down the Garden Path with your hosts Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing right here on Reality Radio 101. To get on board, send us an email right now. Our email address is instudio101 at gmail.com. And now, ladies and gentlemen, right to your hosts of Down the Garden Path, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing. Welcome, everyone, to this episode of Down the Garden Path, where we discuss down-to-earth tips and advice for your plants, gardens, and landscapes. As landscape designers and gardeners, we think it is important and possible to have great gardens that are low-maintenance, and we want to help you make it happen. I'm Joanne Shaw, landscape designer and owner of Down to Earth Landscape Design. I've been designing beautiful landscapes for homeowners east of Toronto for over a decade. With me in his home studio is Matthew Dressing. Welcome, Matthew. (laughs) Welcome, Joanne. Good evening, everyone. I am Matthew Dressing, horticulturist and landscape designer and owner of Natural Affinity Designs. Natural Affinity is a landscape design and garden maintenance firm servicing Toronto and the Eastern GTA. Joanne and I enjoy hosting Down the Garden Path each week, bringing you interesting, relevant, and helpful topics to help you achieve a great garden. We learn right along with you from each other, from our research, and from the guests that join us here on the show. As always, we welcome your questions via social media and email. Excellent. And we want to thank you for everybody who tuned in to the live version of Down the Garden Path. And to remind everyone, you can always check out the past shows of Down the Garden Path on your favorite podcast app. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to be notified of new content. And please, of course, like, share, and leave us a comment. So we'd love to uh, hear from you. Right, Matthew? That's right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, we're almost through um, April already. I can't believe it's going so I fast. Know. I know. I uh, know. Second show of this five-month Monday, uh, April, but we're talking about um, our lawn care this Mm -hmm. month in April. And when it comes to our lawns, we're all a bit fanatical. So this month, we're going to discuss what it takes to get a beautiful lawn, from lawn care 101 to artificial turf, pests and diseases, and everything in between. We've got the tips and tricks to get you growing that green oasis that'll make you the talk of the neighborhood. Tonight, though, we are going to continue our month-long discussion with our look at artificial turf. And joining us this evening is Brian Park from uh, Durham Artificial Grass. So if you want to get on the topic or join the conversation about artificial turf, uh, we'd love to hear from you. You can write us here at the studio at instudio101 at gmail.com. That's right. And so to tell everybody a little bit about Brian. So Brian is the sales manager for Durham Artificial Grass since September 2019. Prior to joining them, he worked in the sports industry in various senior management roles. And before that, he owned and operated his own landscape business. So he's been in the landscape industry off and on for over 20 years. Durham Artificial Grass are experts in artificial grass solutions. It's a family-owned and operated since 2018, providing outstanding customer service and products to Durham Region, Toronto, and Eastern Ontario. Their staff are backed by 35 years of horticulture knowledge to provide you with the best possible service for any project. Durham Artificial Grass carries and installs the highest quality North American-made 
which is key, um, artificial turf, golf simulators, sports flooring, and synthetic ice backed by the manufacturers. Uh, they are here to support DIY projects, contractors, and professional installations. And they have a locally for the GTA, they have an indoor and outdoor showroom located in Hampton. Welcome to the show, Brian. Hi, thanks, Joanne and Matt. Uh, thanks for having me. You're welcome. So I, I emphasize the North American made. I'm sure that's kind of a key selling point. Yes, it is. People love knowing that it's a North American product. Uh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's all about quality as well. I mean, our, our products come from uh, Georgia, and they're just uh, the highest quality. So typically, North American products are known a little more for higher quality and, and just better made, better warranties, that sort of stuff. Excellent. Excellent. Um, go ahead, Matt. Oh, I was going to say, why don't you start to, uh, us off um, a little bit more about Durham Artificial Turf. How long have you guys been around? Where do you service? Perfect, yeah. I mean, uh, the business itself started, uh, the Durham Artificial Grass Branch anyway, started in 2018. So we're into our third full season. Uh, we are the Toronto East and uh, Ontario East Sinlon dealer. So Sinlon is a manufacturer out of, uh, out of Georgia. So we carry Sinlon products uh, among many, among a few others, and uh, that's basically where that started. We we service contractors. We do we also have certified installers, so we do the installs ourselves. But we can really help you know that basic homeowner with their do-it-yourself need, all the way up to you know major commercial jobs. So we can service it all. Um, you can come right into our warehouse, our showroom, take a look at all the products we we have available, and we can give you best practices in order to do it yourself. Or like I said, we can come right out, quote your job, and install it ourselves, or help the contractor in that sense. Perfect. Perfect. And I'd like to think artificial turf has come a long way. So I will like dating myself, you know, artificial turf back in the day was like, you know, it was available on a roll at a home hardware store and people brought it home and unrolled it onto their deck or onto their, you know, instead of a patio or something like that. But it is definitely, you know, the look and feel and quality and installation. It has come a long way, hasn't it? Absolutely. I mean, I, I still get looks. I'm not going to lie. When I, when I tell people about artificial turf, they instantly think that indoor, outdoor, yes. classic feeling, little yeah. short profile carpet, which you think like a putting green or something. That's, yes. you know, that, that's a thing of the past. Uh, you know, it's, it's fully permeable now. It can either be punched or porous. Uh, they just come in different materials. So a lot of, you know, back in the day, a lot of them were made of a polypropylene, which is, you know, a little bit harder, a harsh, resilient material. Most of our products are polyethylene, which is a longer lasting, gentle on the skin, a lot better for the touch. It literally mimics in feel and look real grass now. And not only that, it's just there's so much variety. Like we can get you from a dark color all the way up to a really light color, one inch thick to one and a half inch thick. We can get super plush. So really, we, we can now get you a product that fits any need you're looking for, as opposed to going to home hardware, buying a six foot roll and rolling <laughs> it out, hoping for the best. Uh, yeah, that's that's just not what it is anymore at all. You're actually hard pressed now. Once it's installed and installed properly, you're hard pressed to know that's artificial grass unless someone tells you. Yeah, I know. I've even seen it with the. I've seen samples myself, and I've had it installed for clients, and it has that little bit of a thatch even in the base, mm -hmm. so it kind of really yep. um, gives that authentic look to a lawn, right? Absolutely. Like we have, we have some that have literally brown thatch throughout the whole thing. So if you have you're, you're putting it on your front lawn, for example, and, and you want it to kind of more match the neighborhood because the neighborhood has a hard time getting really green grass. We have something to help you with that. Uh, and it looks really amazing once installed. Yeah, it's, it's something for everybody, basically. Oh, wow. That's great. Now, what is the most popular uh, use? You know, there's so many different uses for it. I'd probably say there's about three different uses. Obviously, you have your, you know, your, your person that might be aging or they've really struggled to get their lawn where they want it. Uh, it's always dying. They've had a grub issue or they have large trees that are taking away, you know, the, 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 the water in the grass. So their grass is dying and they just don't know what to do with it. So that's probably our number one is we're replacing lawn where they're just like, I've tried everything the last 10 years. Nothing works. Put this in. I don't want to have her have to worry about it again. Or they, they're aging out and they're I don't want to mow my lawn anymore. Hmm. That's kind of yeah. one. The second one is is uh, around pools. So we're doing a lot where people have a lot of brick in their backyard. And they want some green space, but they don't want to worry with a 10 by 15 or a 15 by 10 little space to mow that. Get the get the clippings in the pool and do all that. Mm -hmm. Why bring a lawnmower back there just for that? That's one of the reasons. The other one is, is pets. Pets 
mainly dogs is a huge, huge issue because they kill your grass. So people yeah. are sick and tired of, of mud being brought in their house and their dogs digging and ripping it up. So artificial turf is literally the best solution to, to cover that other than putting entire backyard of brick, which, you know, no, not many people want to look out and see an entire brick backyard. They want some greenery back there. And that's where this comes in. And then third would be putting greens. Uh, you know, a, a large golf population loves their putting greens and, and uh, they want to have the coolest thing in their backyard. So yeah, they have function <laughs> with green space. So that's our three most popular um reasons for install basically especially in residential right okay that is very cool um i could definitely see that around pools yeah it's become big we get uh it, it's uh, literally i'm doing one or two quotes a week where people have you know either ripping up the existing brick or they're putting new pools in and want it around the pool mm, okay yeah. so what about so as you mentioned pets <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, my mind goes to like the maintenance issue. So <laughs> what about, for example, dogs, and I'll leave this yep. to your imagination maybe, but what about <laughs> the, the cleanliness or the sanitation of a use like that? Uh, yeah, no, I'm glad you asked me that question, Matt, because that's the, the install process, regardless of whether it's pets or just a normal backyard install, uh, the install is always as important or more important than even the turf you pick because if that's not installed properly you'll have drainage issues you'll have mildew you'll have mold those sorts of things so on a typical install we want a minimum of four inches of base so what we want to do is we want to move any existing soil up to four inches we're going to refill that with a limestone and hpb it's a 60 40 50 50 blend to allow for permeability because obviously water flows through these so you want to get it away from the surface as much as possible so that you know you're good getting a four inch base with a regular bucket when you're talking about pets we actually go one step further um which is something you know maybe our competition doesn't do or not there's a product called air drain air drain okay. is, is a, literally a pvc plastic grate that goes over top of the aggregate and it, it allows water to quickly drain off of the surface and down into the soil it also allows airflow all the way around the turf so you put mm. that down then you mount the turf to that so now what you're doing is you're getting first of all the urine and the pee off of that surface as quick as possible because that's how you get the odors it, it sits on the surface and, and it, it it just sits there and you know in hot weather you can get that odor well this gets it away and allows it to dry super fast and it's designed for pet applications so it's just about that's the first maintenance thing. We also use a product called Envirofill. So instead of a sand base, we use Envirofill, which is a has microband technology and it's antimicrobacterial. So it kills you know molds, mildews, odors. So it helps eliminate all of that. Uh, another key to pet installs is you want to hose them down as often as possible to make sure you're getting that urine off the surface. And we have a product called Easy Clean that once in a while you give it a little, you, you wet it, hose, spray it down and it helps eliminate odors. So it's not maintenance, it's not zero maintenance, it's minimal maintenance in order right. to keep it um, fresh. And if that install, for example, we, we often have to remove other installs that weren't done probably because they only have a two inch base. So what's happening is that a, you know, a dog will pee on that and it's just sitting right at the surface. And over time that just builds up. You wanna mm. flush that away as quick as possible. So install, install, install is what I say, especially when it comes mm -hmm. to, to pets. Installed properly, it'll be great for 20, 30 years and you won't have to worry about those things. Maybe the odd spray down of easy clean. That's about it. Right. And I, I know that's something that I have to explain to my clients that, you know, again, it's not like rolling out the carpet. It's, <laughs> it, it is almost like a, a patio insulation that it's all underneath. It's all the base. That's what's really important um, to make sure that, because I think also people worry that it will heave and wave or sink in certain spots, much like a typical lawn, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, so that, so trying to explain to them that really, no, it, it has to go in properly, right. With professional, absolutely. you know, it's a professional install is really important. It's absolutely quite often I get, um, uh, or I'll go to someone's home and they've installed it themselves. They're like, all I get is this odor. And it's just because they don't have any base underneath it. They felt they could just rip up their grass and throw artificial turf over it that would be fine. There's so much more that goes into it. Also, and like you said, you don't want that base to move. So we have, we use a product called Bender Board. Uh, it's a 100% blue bin recycled material, kind of looks like a, um, a composite deck boarding. And okay. we use that, we use that around soft side to soft side in order to keep that aggregate in place. So it never moves. Uh, it gets staked in with, with 12 inch stakes. It's not moving anywhere. And it allows that aggregate to stay in place and gives us a border to tack our, our turf to around soft sided edges. So there's all little things that a lot of people don't know. Some people might use just basic wood. 
well, what happens to wood over time in the yeah. ground? Especially yeah. Especially if you have a yeah. dog that's rotting, the dog pees, it's going to soak into that wood. Mm-hmm. You don't want those things. So there's so much more that goes into it. And that's why a professional install, although may cost a little more, it's better than replacing it in five years and doing it all over again. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, yeah. get it done right the first time, especially when, you know, every, there's no two installs the same, I like to say. So every, yeah. every setup is different. I'm sure you guys see this as well with brick even. It's, every install is different. So we have to make sure we're doing the right thing to protect for that particular install. If you have a big dog, you have a small dog, you need a thick grass, yeah. a short grass. Those are all things that come into play when we're doing the install. Mm-hmm. And that's good to know to ask those questions because I think sometimes people are calling you because of the pool situation, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they're not they're not telling you necessarily that, oh, by the way, I also have a dog. <laughs> you know, they're they're exactly. thinking that they're thinking the pool aspect of not wanting to mow and and wanting a little bit of green in their backyard. Yep. But you need to know, or I, as a designer, I'm going to need to ask my clients, in addition to that, do they have dogs, right? Because that changes Absolutely. the installation. Absolutely. Those are the questions that I, I ask right off the hop is, is, you know, do you have pets? Is it a large dog? Is it a small dog? Do you plan mm-hmm. on getting dogs? Uh, yeah. Because you know, they might say, I don't have one now, but, you know, in six months, we're getting a lab. Okay, yeah. well, I need to know that because if I just put a regular install in, you might call me and say, I smell a little bit of odor. Well, you didn't tell me we didn't put air drain in because we didn't know you were having a dog. So those are questions I ask. I also ask, do you have drainage issues in the backyard? Is there mm-hmm. any other issues that you we may not know about? Because if, say, they have a huge drainage issue, we might need to go down eight inches instead of four in order right. to get a big enough base mm-hmm. and build up a nice sweat to get everything going to the swell lines and all that sort of stuff. So mm-hmm. there's a lot that goes into it. But it's more that's that's why we're here to make sure we're doing that properly and, and getting them the proper install they need. Excellent. And so as far as the animal, you know, poop as we'll call it, like they, they people <laughs> it still need to poop and scoop, right? Like just like they would on a lawn. They still need to pick <laughs> it up. It's not like gonna you know what I mean? It's not going to wash away. <laughs> Absolutely. So exactly. So you wanna pick up the poops as much as as yes. often as possible. You wanna if they if the if uh, heaven forbid they they've got a runny poop, you wanna hose that yeah. down as quick as possible. Um, so yeah, you still need to, you know, do take your regular maintenance you would. It won't stain the grass, it shouldn't change its color, but obviously we don't want anything staying on there that's gonna smell. <laughs> it's, right. Especially with turf, it's a lot different than grass. That turf, especially if you have a lower profile, it's just gonna sit right there on the top. So yeah. it's easy to pick up, but it's also just gonna be right there. <laughs> so you wanna make yeah. sure you get it off of there. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. <laughs> we haven't discussed that <laughs> lately on the show, Pat, have we? <laughs> no, no. I'm sure you have not. <laughs> uh, well, manure, we've talked about the animal manure and kitchen, you know, that kind of stuff for gardens. But, uh, <laughs> Absolutely. But, you know, there's, there's always that. Um, so it's good to know. I mean, I hope that that's part of an education process that everybody knows um, that it's worth just like brick, you know, it, it the, it's all about the installation. So you can get, if you can go for the, the, the most inexpensive quote, you're going to get mm-hmm. what you pay for. Right. So I think, um, you know, I think that's something I know I constantly have same with design, right? I mean, you can, yep. yes, yeah, so, someone who has been installing brick for a long time can come to your house and do a little napkin sketch and or spray paint something on your lawn and yep. you know and that's what you're going to get um and yep. that's not the service that i personally provide you know with years of schooling and education and experience it's going to be different so same with brick installations if if the price is really i always say if it's too good to be true it probably is <laughs> right that uh well, the base exactly. isn't the same amount and Agreed. and same with artificial turf and that's what I often tell you. I say we're all in business to make money, or else why are we right. in business? So mm-hmm. if my if somebody's quote is considerably less than ours, they've still got to make money on that. The turf yeah. costs what it costs. There's really yeah. you know they're gonna they they have to make. But where are they gonna make that profit? They'll just use less base. They'll use an inferior vendor board, uh, you know, uh, product if they even put a frame on it. They're gonna use. So it, you have to look at those things because yeah, you might have saved now, but as you know, you're not saving in the long run ever when, right. you, when you you know when you're trying to go for cheapest and and i often tell people that are you look at you know if you're looking for the cheapest we're, we're not going to be your person yeah <laughs> you know yeah. but yeah. i mean we can we can help sell you the product but we we're not going to install it for the cheapest because we take we take pride in our quality we're a quality we're high quality product with a high quality install so that you'll be happy for 25 years not mm. the first year we install it and that we right. look long term you know we're not <laughs> looking at you know getting the job now <laughs> you know. Okay. Do you try to, I know you say you'll support homeowners that want to DIY it, but do you kind of try to encourage them not to? 
it depends on the size of the job or what they're doing. So if somebody's got a, a tiny little eight by eight section, I can, you know, I can give them best practices, dig it out four inches and do that. But if they want to do their entire backyard, we usually try to encourage them to hire a professional. Um, okay. It's just, first of all, you need, as you know, a lot of times you need certain machinery to do things properly. Uh, yeah. You need the education to do it, especially with putting greens. We get a lot of people who want to do putting greens themselves. Oh, putting yeah. greens are, there's a lot of seaming, um, a lot, you know, there's undulations, you've got to put holes in it. There's just a lot more that goes to it. So I often tell people, listen, here's how you can do it. But I would recommend having someone do it because you're going to get halfway into it and be super frustrated or mm-hmm. it's just not going to come out right. Seaming is very, very difficult with yeah. artificial turf. And with putting greens, most of the most of the labor is, is seaming. So, you know, especially if you're going to add a nice fringe to it, and you want it to look aesthetically nice and be like a real putting green. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of work. It's, a, it's yeah. a lot of work. And you really need to know what you're doing with putting greens. That's why they typically cost more than a basic uh, artificial turf install right right mm-hmm. so uh so yeah so that yeah i mean especially but you know you want the ball to go in the hole not it get stuck in the seam every time you put it right <laughs> exactly and, and, and you want to use the proper materials because we use you know we top it off with with a, a granite screening at the top and that gives us a you know nice hills and undulations where if you don't really know what you're doing you, you yeah the ball's going to come back to you or it's just going to fall off the back side or you're going to get puddling because that's the last thing you want is puddling right in the middle of your putting green. Um, so you want to be able to get the moisture off of it because putting green material, which is, we use a nylon with a rubber backing, um, it's not permeable. It, 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 but you just like a normal put, you want it to run off the side and drain that way. So there's a lot more to it. Okay. Well, for those of you who are maybe just tuning in, we are talking with Brian Park of Durham Artificial Grass. Um, you can write us in if you have some artificial turf questions. Maybe it's something you're considering because you're done, tired of, uh, you know, mowing your lawn or maintaining uh, that lawn. You know, Brian's got the answers for you for switching over to turf. So you, uh, artificial turf. So you can write us here and uh, get a hold of Brian right now at instudio101 at gmail.com. So you can write us instudio101 at gmail.com. Speaking of writing in, we've got a couple of people who have just written in. Uh, George writes in and says, yay, you guys are on the air. One of my favorite radio shows. Uh, please stay help, happy and healthy, everybody. Uh, George. We've also got um, James writes in. Hi, Joanne and Matthew. Very interesting topic tonight. This product sounds amazing. Wow. Both words, exclamation marks. Uh, why would people, especially very people, busy people, not want to do this in their yards? Stay well. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, sounds great. I mean, you yeah. know, you do have your people with their green thumb, and they love their lawn, and we're not here to take that away from anybody. Um, it's oh, no. not for everybody, right? And, and, you know, some people are like, they absolutely love it, and some, just like anything, some people like a certain flower, some don't. It's it's mm-hmm. not for everybody, but it, it, it really could serve a purpose almost for anybody in certain different ways. Like, we, we can do rooftops, we can do balconies, we can do decks. Um, you know, again, it's not like just laying it down. That's where the air drain and mm-hmm. stuff comes in. But you might be thinking, I love my grass, but I have this little balcony off, the, you know, my back deck. And we can put it on there and give you a little green space. Just something different. Have you ever installed them on uh, balconies for, like, apartment buildings? Yes. There, there's a few variables that need to come into play. Depending on the balcony, uh, you need to sometimes get approval from the condo corp. Um, and right. you always want to install it with air drain because you need that water to go somewhere. Because what could happen yeah. if you just put it directly over concrete, it's going to drain through the, the grass and then has nowhere to go. And it's just going to, you're going to get mildew and mold underneath. So that's why the air drain, you just put the grates down, put it on, mount it on top of that. And it allows that water to flow just like it would off a normal balcony. So okay. we do, yeah. Oh, go ahead. We even have fire, just before, we even have fire rated. Uh, E108 fire rated turf and air drain. So for buildings, oh, yeah. if they say, is it a fire hazard? Well, no, it's not because we have high level uh, fire rated turfs we can put on your balcony. And the air drain is also a fire rated air drain. So if there is a fire, it's not an issue. It won't catch fire. It actually just melts, if, if anything. There you go, Matt, because Matt's in an apartment yeah. with a balcony. Yeah, so there you go. Your own little lawn that you don't have to, yeah, I know, your own little lawn that you don't have to cut. Exactly. Perfect. Brian and I might be talking. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
give you a little bit of space there. That's right. That's right. That's exactly I want to highlight the. I want to highlight something you said about the water. So something that I don't think people realize is that it is permeable. That water, you know, and and that is a big feature and a lot and a big word in our industry, right? Even with Absolutely. patios and 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 paving spaces, water management is huge. And so mm-hmm. the fact that, and I know I did a install last year. Um, and it was actually the arborist who suggested it because a client mm-hmm. had a very mature tree in their backyard and mm-hmm. could get nothing. And it was in a yard with a pool. So nothing could grow yep. in this back corner where this mature tree was. And they really wanted to use that space. And we were, I was researching, you know, a few options while I sent the arborist to look at the tree. And it was the arborist who said, you know, I think you need something permeable like artificial turf. And that would be your best bet. And, and that's mm-hmm. what we did. It's amazing. It's, uh, it actually drains at a faster rate than lawn does. So, it, you know, if you have drainage issues, we can, we can play with that and help fix those drainage issues by getting it off the surface as quick as possible. Um, so, I mean, there is, it, it definitely serves many more purposes than just looking pretty. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it is a function and, and it does help solve some solutions. Mm-hmm. And, and thinking of mature trees, people, I think, would, you know, they don't want to remove the tree and, that, you know, as far as protecting Absolutely. nature and protecting their yard. But realizing that sometimes, you know, an artificial turf um, can be a good solution because it is, there are many trees, right, that uh, <laughs> grass doesn't grow under and people are spending a ton of money uh, and, and chemicals and different things and grass seeds and different things to make traditional grass grow where it's really not going to grow. Um, oh, and I think they think that putting plastic down in their mind, you know, is, <laughs> yeah. is not a solution. But really, the water does penetrate, and it and it isn't harmful to the trees. Not at all. I mean, it, it, turfs are either porous um, or punked, or, or they they're called punched. So they have holes in them, or the entire backing is porous. So yeah, it it drains very very well. Um, and, and that's kind of also what's different from the turf you might have thought of from 25 years ago, you know, <laughs> 20 years ago. That It literally just puddled on top and it smelled and it, no, it gets it right off the surface and, and it flows right away from the, uh, the, top, the top layer. Again, base, 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 right? Base is very yeah. important if you're draining water. So it, that water still needs to go somewhere. So you need to make right. sure that ground, the, the base is done properly or else you would just have pooling and you'll end up with a cement base underneath uh, and nowhere for that water to go. Okay. So even in that case with mature roots, then how do we get the base? Like, is it still doable? Absolutely. Um, so there's a number of reasons. Obviously, we can trim away some of those those roots if we need to, or we just, if, as long as it's deep enough and we can get down low enough, we can just build around that. So it's not okay. a big deal at all. We we do have roots. Obviously, in some cases, we find more roots than we anticipated when we get down mm-hmm. there, and that it can cause some issues, but there's a solution to everything, and we can work through it. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, We have a listener question, um, actually, and uh, James just writes in, can your guests give us an estimate as to the approximate cost per square foot? Thank you. Of course I can. So (laughs) uh, most common question. So the the turf itself ranges in price from, you know, $4 to $9 a square foot, depending on the option you pick. To have us install it, you're looking at anywhere from about $12 $12 to $20 a square foot. So okay. that's usually your, your, your price range. Typically, the larger the yard, the less per square foot. So um, it just has to do with, you know, the, the, by the way the rolls come and, and how easily we can work a- around the area. But you're looking at, you know, no higher than typically 20 a square foot. And usually around that $12 mark uh, is the lowest. Okay. With the install. Nice. Okay. Yeah. A lot of that and also depends on which turf they choose, right, for that solution. Right. Right. And, and I would assume like the pet friendly one versus just a, you know, regular backyard one, right? Yep. You're, you're, it, it, believe it or not, not a whole lot of difference because typically a lower, the lower profile turf that we, and the turfs we often recommend for pets um, are, are a little bit lower in price sometimes because they're a little more prof, little, low profile. And then you're only adding about a dollar, dollar fifty to two dollars maximum per a square foot for the air drain. Um, so typically we're not doing big giant backyards in air drain. A lot of times it's, it's smaller dog runs, um, you know, maybe a 20 by 20 section, that sort of thing. So it's really not a huge investment more to go to the air drain, you know, a dollar fifty a square foot more. And then a lot of times that's offset with the type of turf you pick. So it, it's, it's really roughly pretty close to the same price. Okay. All right. 
And as far as the warranty, you mentioned earlier about, you know, lasting 25 years. So, and, and I think that ties in a bit with the environmental issues too, like how, um, how, um, cause it's kind of new, like it, even though turf technically has been around a long time, I think this level of turf is fairly new in the industry. What type of uh, warranty and is it a manufacturer warranty or uh, an installation warranty, that type of thing? Yes, so we have we have a couple options. So I'll start with the turf. The turf itself, uh, the ones that we carry either have a 15-year warranty or a limited lifetime warranty. So some of our turfs literally carry at least a percentage of the value of the turf for as long as you own it, wow. um, which is pretty cool. So it could be a 30-year-old turf, and you could still get 15% of that value of the turf back when you if you want to replace it. Um, the other oh, turf, cool. it's a 15-year it's a um and it's kind of got a reducing scale as that 15 years goes along. Uh, the install itself, we as a company provide a three-year install warranty. Uh, with that said, you can actually extend that a year, keep extending it a new year if you have us out to power broom. So power brooming is essentially, it looks like a little rototiller uh, with broom bristles on it, and it, it stands the turf back up. So basically, we would do an inspection and do that. So if you have us out to do that every spring, for example, we extend that install warranty that year. So really, you could have a warrant. You could have an install warranty on your turf for 20 years if you truly wanted to, because you've had us out every year to do a quick little spring inspection and power broom, make sure everything's, uh, you know, all dandy, and then away we go. And then if that summer, say a nail pops up, you could call us and we would come and fix that. Okay. What, what does the like a warranty extension or that visit cost? It depends. So you, you know, a, a power broom ranges from anywhere from about $150 up to 300 depending on the size of the property uh so a small okay. you know your average backyard's around 150 bucks so what's the cost of a, a pool opening you know sort yeah. of along those lines yeah so it's yeah, right. similar yeah. to a pool opening we come we inspect it we make sure it doesn't need a top up of any infill um or any are all the seams okay so you're just extending that life maybe things the homeowner might not know to look for you know they might think yeah. things great and we might catch that and, and be able to fix it right there on the spot um we always regardless we always come out uh, the first spring after install, because if anything typically is going to go wrong, we're going to see it after that first thaw. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a nail might not have taken a seam. The glue just might've been a little light. Uh, we're going to catch that then in that first spring regardless, but then having us out to power room, what it also does, it always keeps your grass looking its best because it can go flat. So your other option is you buy a plastic rake and you can rake that out yourself, but having us do it extends that warranty. Okay. I bet the power broom looks a little better too than just it, it, a rake. It, it, Make it look nice it, and fresh yeah, and new. Yeah, I mean, and this <laughs> isn't to say that your grass is just going to go flat every year. Uh, right. It no. really won't. It, it takes time for that to happen, and it also depends on the use. So if you have a high traffic area, it's going to go flat a lot sooner than if you just entertain in your backyard once in a while or just have your kids running in and out of the pool. Um, but if you say you have three dogs, that backyard is going to take – it's going to go flat a little sooner – and that's where, you know, we're probably going to want a little more pro lower profile turf so it doesn't go full out as quick. And that doesn't mean that anything's wrong with it. The power broom brings it right back to life. That's all that does. Mm, you know, okay. it, it, it's, yeah, that's, that's the extent of the maintenance, really, <laughs> is, yeah. is, you know, a, a rake or a power broom. That's it. Right. And, uh, right. and hose it off once in a while if the dog needs something. <laughs> Um, and it's not getting hot. Like I think of the hot summer, you know, again, I'm thinking of what people would say that, you know, as far as in the sun or a, a really sunny backyard, mm -hmm. the t like touching on your walking barefoot is not an issue, right? It, it can get warm. So mm -hmm. it's going to get warmer okay. than regular grass. Okay. But not, not as hot as a deck or a, or a patio. Here's the other right. trick to artificial grass. Literally a quick spritz of water on it. It's instantly cooler. So it's mm. instantly cool and you can play on it. Like kids can play. It's never going to get to the point it burns you if right. that's what you're looking like. It's never going to hurt anyone or burn, but it might yeah. feel a little warm to the touch when you walk onto it um, mm. because it's okay. obviously, a, it's it's a plastic still, right? So it is right. going to get a little mm. warm. Um, our grass, we have grasses with heat block technology and stuff like that, which are supposed to help cool it. We have a, ones that have a green backing. That they're supposed to help cool it a little bit. But at the end of the day, a quick spritz of water cools it right down if you ever think it just feels a little too hot. It'll go okay. right, you know, and, and you're good to go. Yeah. Okay. And so if yeah. you're, if a contractor does the installation, but you mm -hmm. still will warranty the product. Absolutely. So once you buy okay. the product, it's, it's warrantied. Um, 
you know, obviously if something major goes wrong in the install, that's something that might happen. But that's very rare. The, the turf itself, that's a manufacturer's warranty. So when we sell you the turf, whether it's to the contractor or you're coming in off the street to do a do-it-yourself job, uh, you get that 15-year warranty or the limited lifetime, depending on which turf you choose. Right. Okay. That is very so good to know. We've been talking about all this amazing turf. Um, mm -hmm. A couple questions have come in, but I think one that's Perfect. pretty important probably for our listeners is yep. uh, what is your website? Where can our guests get in contact with you and uh, follow you and learn more about your product? Oh, absolutely. I, I, can, I can help you out with that. So our <laughs> website is, is pretty simple. It's durhamartificialgrass.ca. So, you know, just look that right up, durhamartificialgrass.ca. So just remember it's .ca, not .com. <laughs> That's yeah. the thing. Uh, if you go, if you, you do a Google search for Durham Artificial Grass, that comes up. We should be the first one to come up there as well. Uh, if you want to email me, that's super easy. They can email me at sales at durhamartificialgrass.ca. So again, sales at durhamartificialgrass.ca. Um, and then the other option, obviously, is they, they can call in. Um, I'm available on my cell pretty much 24 uh, seven, but it, <laughs> you know, it, it, and, and that's 416-936-0937. Uh, Excellent. And you're on Instagram as well. We are. Our Instagram is, I believe it's just Durham artificial grass. Okay. Uh, perfect. I believe correctly. And that's also our Facebook. Yeah. Durham okay. artificial grass. Inc. <laughs> it comes up, but if you type in Durham artificial grass, that's what comes up. That and, comes uh, we have all of our we're, we're always putting our, our most recent installs or some of our coolest installs like we did a uh the uxbridge uh bmx bike park we did their mm -hmm. their artificial grass Ooh. super cool project we did so we're constantly keeping people up to date on cool projects we have going on and you know we did a soccer pitch in some lady's basement uh for her kids it was <laughs> unbelievable they loved it it was a christmas present so these are the things we keep you up to date on our our, our putting greens also any cool promotions we have going on you can find right on our social media Oh, that That's would awesome. be good. Yes, my husband mm -hmm. would love a putting green, I think. But <laughs> I, have we done that one in the front yard, though, Brian? Because that's the only place where we could put one. <laughs> well, then, then you're all, you'll come out one day and the whole neighborhood's playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that would be the case for sure, for sure. So, well, so thank you very good. much, Joyce, for that question. Yes. Um, yeah, and we should, because we do have U.S. listeners, Brian. So the product mm -hmm. is Sin Lawn, which is also available in the U.S. Uh, yes, it is. So Sinlon, okay. they're they're all over. We're we're the distributor okay. for this area. Yeah, they're all over. So if you do have U.S. Um, uh, you know, account people listening and they they want yes. to uh, look into it, they can literally just go to Sinlon dot com, and, okay, and or perfect. just type in Sinlon artificial grass, and it'll come right up for them. There's there's distributors all over the USA. Uh, okay. Worst case, worst case scenario, they have my email. Tell me where they are. I can help hook them up with whoever's in that area. Okay, perfect. Oh, that's that's good because we do have lots of listeners from the U.S. and so um, that's good to let them know that uh, you know everything you're saying also applies to products that are available to them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think just for people who might Google Sinlon, Sin is S Y N, correct? Correct. S Y N L A W N. Sinlon. Excellent. Okay. okay. Well, Katie's written in a question. Uh, Katie's wondering how the product is held in place and wonders if it's in, by nails. Absolutely. A, a great question. So again, part of the install process, some will do it a little differently. Um, proper practice is uh, six inch or 10 inch spikes, steel spikes, because you want them to rust into the ground. So they become a permanent fixture there. Um, and they're, they're only around the edges. So we put them every four to six inches, uh, about an inch in off the edges, all the way around. And then we add the infill, which gives it that extra weight and cushion and also keeps it in place in the middle. Because we don't just put nails all over the place. Uh, mm -hmm. You pull it super tight, get those nails around the edges, and then use the infill to give it that extra weight and life in the middle so that it doesn't move around anywhere and it's a permanent fixture. Now, when, is that edging similar to, like, the edge restraint on a patio? You know how it's the it's same similar, thing? Than, but it, okay. Yeah, it's similar but looks more like a wood. Um, and it, it, we use it, as, it's a garden edging as well. It's called Bender Board. You can literally look okay. it up. Uh, it's right on our website as well. So if you go to DurhamArtificialGrass.ca and you click on one of the drop downs, let's say Bender Board, it's right on there. It comes in black or brown uh, okay. and it all depends on. So sometimes we literally, there's some cool pictures where we've used it 
adds a, a, you know, a garden edging where the turf comes right up to it. And then you can sit, we leave it exposed. So it looks like a really nice garden edging, a really hot, it looks like it's really, really expensive garden edging, but it's really not that expensive. <laughs> it's kind of neat. <laughs> Okay. And it'll last cool. much longer than the plastic brick edging that you have where, you know, it's basically a, a PVC or, or whatnot. It's uh, some of them are metal now. The gar- this is it, It's meant to last literally as long as the turf or, the, or you want it to last. Okay. Excellent. Um, so we have to, or is there another question, Matt? Sorry. There is one more question. But we okay. Can... No, go ahead. Go ahead with our listener <laughs> question. <laughs> Linda's asking, uh, how long does it take to dry after being hosed down or after a rainstorm? Mm. Uh, it really, to be honest with you, very quick because of the fact that it's porous and the water is getting off the surface, it dries very quick, quicker than most grass would because it's, there's not a lot of pooling or puddling. Um, so obviously, if you get a crazy torrential downpour, it might take a little bit of time to come off, but your, your basic rainfall or your basic watering, it, it, it dries very quick. If we use air dry, uh, if you use air drain underneath, it's almost instantaneous. It dries very, very quick because of the fact that wow. it's got the airflow rolling around it. So you can that's why it's great around pools. You can come out, sit on it, and the water runs through it as opposed to sitting on the surface, which which mm-hmm. happens quite often with grass. Grass takes right. a long time in, in a lot of cases to drain out. This goes right through it. So it it, it dries very, very quick. Um, I couldn't give you an exact amount of time because obviously there's variables that come into play. How warm is it out? Is it winter time? Is it fall? But because the water is getting off the surface very, very fast, you don't have that mm. pooling. So really it's just a bit of surface moisture. Okay. Nice. It's good to know. Mm-hmm. And snow doesn't, uh, snow and ice doesn't have a, a big effect on it at all? Yeah. No, you have to roll it up and put it back in your garage in the winter. Oh, okay. No, I'm kidding. No, it's not at all. <laughs> I was thinking that, but I'm like, uh, oh, okay. No, sure. it, it will not affect what? it at all. Just just leave it, let it, let it do its thing. And, uh, when it dries and the, the snow goes away, you'll have a beautiful green grass. It's funny. We some of our our our, insta, our customers that we've installed for us say the hardest thing they have to get used to is looking out in the middle of winter at a green grass. Yeah, yeah. That takes a bit of time to get used to, but no, the, the elements are, are no. It has about a you'll see about a one percent UV degradation for about twenty years. So it takes about twenty years to get one full percent of UV degradation. Snow, salt, those sorts of things won't change or discolor it. So there's it, it's a it's a year round product. Wow. Very that's durable. Great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So wait, now I'm going to get conscious. That's right. <laughs> golf course. It should all be artificial. We could golf year round. It'd be great. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be the one to bring up the, the I'm environmental impact. So I know that yep. there is, and I can see both sides of it just because I'm yep. in the industry, but I'm sure there's many listeners that are, might be like, Oh my gosh, covering it there. You know, the worst thing in the world would be to cover their backyard with what they're saying is plastic. Um, or rubber mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. when you think about all the money we spend watering and all the chemicals we use on our traditional lawns yep. you know um, can you touch on just the environmental impact of, of artificial turf absolutely I, I think the most obvious point is no watering right mm-hmm. I mean other than to, to spray it down with you know you might need to hose it once in a while but that's quick you're not wasting a lot of water you're not watering it every night or every few yeah. days if it doesn't rain so there's a big environmental issue you're not you're not wasting water um, the second is the carbon footprint. You're not cutting grass. So there's no lawnmower, you know, there's less lawn emissions and gas emissions into the air. You're not buying as much gas. So there, there's that issue. You also have to think about there's no weed killers, no fertilizers mm-hmm. needed, no herbicides. Um, so those are really the main environmental issues that come along with it. Uh, one of the issues is that we get against it is it's not recyclable. Well, it actually is. Um, it's not as popular here in Canada yet, but we're working on that. Um, it can definitely be recycled. You just have to have a, a company willing to do it. And in, over in Europe, there is companies that are recycling artificial turf. So it's only a matter of time before that's here. Okay. But there's and, ways to reuse it though, right? Oh, if someone, uh, like if you bought a house that had it and you didn't want it, for instance, um, mm-hmm. There's ways that, you know, is that something that you are like a service you offer to people say they want it removed and, we we don't recycle we'll, we'll remove it at this point it kind of just we you know if we have to take it out it, it does you know either stays at our yard or, or gets um disposed of but we're working on that so eventually it will be where it comes to us and gets recycled you can reuse it i mean it you know say it's only been down for five or six years and you and they wanted to move it to another location you could definitely do that um mm-hmm. but that's really the, the the biggest issue that we're working on is um how do we make it more environmentally friendly in that sense 
that and, and it is happening all through Europe. They do recycle it uh, some parts of the U.S. We just don't have that here in our area yet. Um, believe it or not, us as a company have talked about it and looked into how can that happen because we want to be as environmentally friendly as possible. Um, you know, the good thing is once most people have put it in, I, I you know, we we could probably count on one hand the amount of times we've actually ever had to remove turf. And even mm-hmm. we've had to remove it, it's because something has gone wrong with the install, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and usually it's a urine issue or it smells really bad. You wouldn't want to recycle that anyways. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. um, but it, I mean, that definitely is something that as an industry we're, we're working on. Uh, because as environmentally friendly and as far as it has come, it can always get better. And one of the ways right. to get better is make the product itself or, or have ways to recycle it. And it is happening. Um, as you know, nothing happens overnight. So, um, you know, hopefully in the near future, we can be talk, sitting down again and we'll be saying, look, now we can fully recycle it. Uh, but that is that is definitely really the only drawback is that it's not fully 100% recycled unless you have a facility that can do it. And there's not right. a lot of them around yet. You know, but as it gets more popular and gets bigger, the more those facilities can pop up because there has to be a need for it in order for yeah, it to pop up. Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. 25 year investment. Most people aren't putting it down and ripping it up. You yeah, know, it's just yeah. not. Once it's down, it's literally in place. So yeah, it's yeah. not as big a, an issue as it would, uh, you know, uh, to me, I think fertilizers and weed killers would be more of an issue of whether my turf is recyclable that I'm not going to remove for 25, 30 years anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. That's, yeah. You know, yeah. And just a thought, yeah, the amount of water, and I think of all, all of us who, you know, aim to water their lawn and and forget about the sprinkler mm-hmm. and, you know, are now watered the whole street and, and that yep. kind of thing. So Another thing that's really cool about it, and, and it, it obviously has to be part of the install process, but you can literally recycle the water, rainwater off of it. So you can funnel that rain because it's porous and the water flows through it so well, uh, you can literally it build channels and stuff that that recycle that rainwater to be used for other things you know watering your gardens those sorts of things those are things you can do yeah okay so those are those are just other options that are there um if if truly wanted to so i mean it it can be you know it it can serve many many purposes and do you offer a system like that when you install to recycle the water if need be if they wanted that you could it's just a channeling system yeah so i mean basically it's like a weeping tile that you would lay in the you know, in the in the base when you're doing it, and it would channel some of that water off into a basin, for example, that you would uh, you would use. So it can definitely be. Yeah. Done. Yep, we could definitely do that if need be. Oh, okay, very nice. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, oh. and I know time is flying. Oh my goodness, just, it's a great topic, <laughs> and and I think it's, it's just oh, the imagine. whole industry has come so far, don't you think, Brent? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's and and, and every day advancing even more i mean mm-hmm. it feels like every time we get a new sample turf in or whatnot we're amazed by it we're like oh wow really this is pretty neat or check this one out it's just yeah. um you know because there's the competition as you know the more popular something gets the more the next company wants to one up it or come up with the newest product like we have our Sinlon products literally have antibacterials built into them so they have micro it's actually the same technology that bauer hockey equipment uses in their in their undergarments for hockey oh, cool. to okay. um, kill bacteria and odors. It's actually in our Sinlon turps. Not all of them. There's a certain select lines that have that. Um, some have, uh, you know, heat blocked or have a technology where it cools the air coming off of it so that it doesn't feel as hot, especially when it's bouncing off windows and things like that. So there's just all kinds of cool uh, anti-static. So, you know, so that there's no static charge or a reduced static charge off it. All kinds of things are coming out. Every year there's literally a, a, a new... Um, turnaround in the industry where something's new and somebody's trying something new so you know it, it's it's pretty neat excellent cool. excellent and despite us um not being declared a, you know everybody in landscaping i don't know if our listeners realize we're not so far not declared essential services um mm-hmm. but many of us are still kind of working behind the scenes right brian you can still sure. go and quote and and look at a site you know and, and maintain physical distance and and kind of uh, still do that during this time Absolutely. I, I can go out. We can keep our distance. Um, you know, I, I had an appointment with a lady the other day where I was in her backyard and she was talking to me through her upstairs window. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, so there's, you know, a lot of times they can say, my, this is what I want you to do. Send me pictures and say, my back gate's open. Can you please go take a look and then provide me a quote? Um, I've even had people send me pictures or do FaceTime um, things with me as long as we're getting the measurements. So I can still do the quotes just like I was before. We just have to tweak how we're doing them a little bit. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Same yeah. with me and design. Uh, as well and um, and let um, 
everybody know that you can, you know, homeowners can come to you direct, or if they are already working with a contractor, they can recommend that their contractor contact you. Absolutely, yeah. If they have a contractor and they're, you know, they want to put some turf in, and the, and the contractor's not sure who to use or uses someone different, by all means, they can send that contractor our, our way, or they can contact us ourselves, and we'll get in touch with their contractor for them. Um, we do have an indoor and outdoor showroom, so we can show you it installed, all different types of applications, different turfs down, um, the products used. We can literally show you. You can touch, feel them. Uh, at the moment, our indoor showroom is closed. Uh, mm-hmm. to, you know, because, uh, you know, we, we're trying to do our best with the social distancing. We want to do our part. Uh, but once it's open, yeah, we're open uh, 8 till 4.30 every day uh, Monday, or Monday to Friday, I should say, not weekends, but we will do weekends by appointment. Uh, so, okay. if, you know, if somebody wants to just pop in and see what we got, we're, we're there. Um, uh, we are, we're up in Hampton. Our address is right on our website. It's 1893 Durham Region Road 3. Um, but you can get it right off our website or off Google search. Okay. All right. And the website again is durhamartificialgrass.ca. Correct. Yes. Dot .ca is the key part there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. If, if, anyone, if anyone does forget and they type in Durham Artificial Grass, it's the first, it'll come right up. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, Brian. Is there any, like, as we mm-hmm. wrap up, is there anything else you want to make sure our listeners know about? Uh, no, I think we covered quite a, a bit there. Um, you know, I'm I'm available anytime, really. I mean, obviously not at midnight or nothing, but I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty accessible if they have any questions or anything. I've given my email. That's my direct email, so they would come directly to me if any of your listeners have any questions or, or any concerns. Go to our website, but uh, I'm here to help if if they need anything or even just have. There's I would say there's no such thing as a, as a silly question, um, especially when it comes to something new. So yeah. I, I'm here to help them out, and so is Darm Artificial Grass. We. We, uh, we welcome anyone from contractors to your basic homeowner. Wonderful. Well, thank That's you very you much. Do. You're very welcome. Thanks, Joanne. Thanks, Matt. And, uh, you know, maybe we should do this once a week. It was so popular. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Yeah, we can. I'm sure. But I think we'll definitely have you back because I think this That'd one is always we, we have a joke on our show that regardless of whatever our topic is, there's always a listener <laughs> who writes in about the grass. <laughs> so, exactly. yeah. Perfect. Uh, so definitely Perfect. our listeners love their lawn. So, uh, so thank Perfect. you very much for thank educating us all about artificial turf. And we'll be in touch. Thanks, guys. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, you too. You Bye. Too. Well, I think that was a great show. What do you think, Matt? I think so. I think a lot of our listeners had some really good questions. And, um, yeah, I think it's it's definitely something to consider. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and I think that thinking about, I know initially, like, the whole environmental aspect, you know, when people first started saying, oh, I can't believe my neighbors are ripping out their grass and putting in rubber and, you know, that type of thing. But when you start to really see that how much time and effort and money we spend on um, our tradition, really sometimes just doesn't make sense. Exactly. All this time and energy on uh, pretty much just a monoculture. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. What's what's the real benefit? So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we're still getting you. We hope our listeners are enjoying the show. Where Matt and I are still getting used to not being in the studio together as we are physically distancing from each other, from Gary. Hi, Gary. Um, but, Hello, uh, you're sounding still, great. You know, yeah, we still want to uh, bring you this, you know, great information uh, to help you with your lawn and garden, even though and we're anxiously waiting to be declared uh, an essential service again. Um, Matt, mm-hmm. you, the garden center you work at has kind of, uh, you know, changed how they do things. So what's going on there? Yeah, we've definitely changed. Um, we're not allowed to have people in, obviously, uh, but we are doing an online order and curbside pickup. Uh, so people can phone in or, or order online through e-commerce and show up at the store and we will bring it out to them and uh, load it up for them and take care of them that way so you can definitely check in with your local garden centers a lot of them are reacting to still bring you uh you know pansies and other cool season uh spring flowers that are out there and that are available right now a lot of our seed starting kits and soils and everything is still available for you uh but we're definitely doing um you know social distancing take your time it's just definitely going to be um very different it's not going to be the garden center uh, experience that you're used to it will be it definitely be something different so um just i mean i'm grateful that we can be still there for all of you guys and uh hopefully you're grateful too that you're 
can not be so bored <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that right. garden and still do mm-hmm. something. Well, the, the advantage, I think, is the, our weather here in the GTA, anyway, hasn't really been that great. We haven't even had two nice days together. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, as keen as everybody is to get out there, it, the weather hasn't been really encouraging. So hopefully okay. things will, will change up as, as weather improves. That's right. Uh, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. So, um, and it's good to know because I know um, online the the demand for seeds and starting people people starting their own seeds and growing their own food and flowers uh, has just grown incredibly. So it's good to know that garden centers. Uh, I know a lot of the mail order seed places are completely sold out or really back backlogged with orders. But now that the garden centers are opening and moving to this curbside, um, that homeowners can purchase the seeds from them, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that should be able to alleviate some of that backlog for sure. Checking with your local garden centers. Most of them have multiple companies that they supply seeds from. Um, So there's a good selection that's still out there and available uh, quicker than your online, not to knock the online uh, companies or anything, but there's definitely still a good selection out there if you're experiencing some backlog issues. Okay. And there is still plenty of time. I know we talked about um, seed starting and a lot of growing for the, in our March our March column or our March episodes. Um, yeah. So we do want to let people know that it's, you're not too late. There are, you know, our, our last frost date, frost date is like around May 24th. And um, so going by the seed package, you know, you tend to be six to eight weeks sometimes uh, or sometimes even shorter. So, uh, so you're still in good shape, right? Yeah, exactly. It's still just the end of April. Here at the GTA, the weather is still very iffy. I mean, unless you're somewhere in the South, North Carolina, California, Florida, you know, closing down and you didn't start seeds, that might stick you for some veggies or something. But if you're definitely in a cooler climate, there's still lots of time. We're still waiting on the weather. Not much is going to still be able to be put out. And there's a lot of insects and overwintering things that are are still asleep and, and need some of that extra winter protection for as much as we want to get out there and start cleaning and making everything perfect for the year right. ahead. So yeah. lots of time, lots of time. Yeah. And still call your local garden centers if you know that they've got uh, the curbside pickup. There's still people there that might still be able to answer your questions and uh, direct to your questions, which brings us to kind of us, a self plug. You know, you can always reach us as well. If you have gardening questions, you can always find us uh, on Facebook or follow our Instagram at uh, Down the Garden Path Podcast. And uh, Joanne and I off here can uh, discuss different gardening tips, tricks, and advice to uh, keep your garden thriving and low maintenance. So reach out for to us as well. Yeah, absolutely. And as a landscape designer, I'm, I can also, you know, much like Brian, I can still, you know, chat, I'm chatting with a few cu- customers over the phone and going to the home or the, the property and doing some measuring and, and, you know, we can email the drawings and concepts and back and forth. So it's, you know, it's not quite the, the experience we all love at the kitchen table, but we still can be productive because you want to get in the queue when, when things do start up again. Um you know, it, that's when it's when it's going to be concerning, because if you want, I, I think a lot of people aren't going to be traveling, you know, uh, yeah. you're going to want to be staying home. So now if you want to get uh, your installation done uh, at the beginning of the season, which is going to be later than usual, um, it's, it's a good time to start the planning now. So, again, a little shout out to all the designers all over uh, Canada and the U.S. Uh, now is the time to kind of start talking and start thinking about plans uh, for your new yards. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And next week, yeah. Yeah. Well, next week we're going to do some more about lawns. We're going to talk about some lawn alternatives. Um, Mm -hmm. If you missed last show, I know last week was Easter. So two weeks ago we did a show on lawn care 101. So if you have questions about all those, grass seed commercials that you're seeing or the fertilizer commercials you're you're seeing that are still very premature, um, please go back and listen to our Lawn Care 101 on your favorite uh, uh, podcast app. And next week, we're going to talk about some different lawn alternatives. And in addition to um, artificial turf, you know, lots of people are wondering about clover or turning your small small grass lawn into a a garden. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of different things, right? That's right. That's right. So stay tuned in uh, for next week, for sure. Uh, that's the end. So thank you, yeah. George James, James, 
Joyce, Katie, and Linda. Thank you for writing in your questions. Thanks, Brian, for being on the show. Thank you, Gary, for producing the show. Thank you. And uh, we will see you next week, next Monday at 7. We are on the air. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to Down the Garden Path here on Reality Radio 101. Bye, everybody. Thank you for listening to Down the Garden Path with your hosts, Joanne Shaw and Matthew Dressing, right here on Reality Radio 101.